Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. Oh boy. Hey, how are you everybody? <laughs> Welcome to the Ramble. Goes on until uh, midnight uh, Eastern Daylight Time. Welcome to spring. Yes, today is spring. <laughs> and at midnight tonight here, a nor'easter is supposed to hit us with the biggest storm we've had all year. <laughs> it's spring! It's spring! Anyway, got something to start off the show. It was pre-recorded earlier in the day, and I wanted to tell you that. Normally, I wouldn't even make a big deal about it. But uh, I am uh, making a big deal about it because if you will notice down in the bottom part of the picture, where my picture is, it's frozen. Uh, I didn't notice it was frozen until about 15 minutes into this interview. So don't mind if it's frozen. You still hear my voice, and you still see my lovely and uh, healthy it, it, it by all means healthy uh ex-wife ronnie so here we go ladies and gentlemen near portland oregon lake oswego is there is there actually is there a lake there and everything there's a lake there called oswego and, yes and it <laughs> that's where you live it's it, you say portland right Yes, it's the first suburb south of Portland, so, you know, it's the same thing. Now, may I say something about my ex-wife, Ronnie, here, is that she has a certain love for cities named Portland. Because, <laughs> Not necessarily. Because she worked. It was all an accident. <laughs> she, 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 moved, she moved to Portland, Maine, which incidentally was the place all the uh, bombers for the uh, uh, 9-11 took off from that airport. I thought it was Boston. No, he went to Boston. One of them went to Boston from uh, your airport there. I remember going to your airport in Portland to leave and they're like, they're frisking me and they're doing everything. And I just said, I wish you'd been this good about the bombers, you well, know, that good because uh, of the bombers. and they didn't, they were not happy with that, with that, but the, no, it seems as though that's where, I think that's where Muhammad Atta took off from. Oh, he I started there. Yeah. 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 So, and then you moved. What was funny is when I moved from Portland, Maine, to Portland, Oregon, was trying to explain it to friends. Oh, Ronnie, I thought you were already there. <laughs> <laughs> and what what is it about the name Portland? You were born in Portland, Oregon. Yes. Oregon. Yes. Yeah. yeah not Portland, Maine. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is, is when I had to leave New York. Um, I knew I didn't want the South. We've lived there. It's hot. I don't want to go back. Um, I knew I didn't want the middle of the country. I like coasts. Yeah. So, and I like big cities. So that left Boston and New York and Portland and Seattle. Well, I had to leave New York because I couldn't afford it anymore. And I've been to Seattle enough that I think it has all the, all the disadvantages of a big city and none of the advantages. I feel something similar for Boston. So that left Portland, Oregon, where, you know, I'd been back here to visit now and again, but I haven't really lived here since I was 15. Um, but when I was in Portland, I had chosen Portland, Maine, be, uh, the first time around, the first move, because I thought my New York friends would come visit me there more easily than on the West Coast. Guess what? More of you have come to see me here than ever did in Portland, Maine. Really? Really? Yeah. I uh, I enjoy my Portland, Maine was very nice, and I've hardly ever been to Portland, Oregon. I've gone through Portland, Oregon. I've stopped to take a leak in Portland, Oregon, <laughs> but I've never actually spent time in Portland, Oregon, except for the TV show Portlandia, which kind of is is it does it have any kind of reality to Portland, or is it just meant to be comedy? You know what? It, it, it's one of the things that comes up a lot because of what my blog is about, which mm -hmm. is what it's really like to get old, is that I stopped watching Portlandia after the most of the first season because it's only about young people in Oregon. Yeah. As, as far as that shows, because nobody over the age of 25 lives here. 
Oh. So that's what it's that that may be what the city is like for very young people, but I don't think I don't know about everybody else. Well, of course, it's a younger person, or they're in their forties, I guess, who who do the show. So I suppose they write to what they know. You know, yeah, you, you you can't blame everything you on it. You can't call yourself a writer if you can only <laughs> write about yourself. Well, yeah, but. You know, you're gonna. You're, if you if you're a comedian, you 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 relate to things that happen to you every day, and that becomes the humor. Now they don't. I don't think they live in Portland. I don't think that's their hometown or anything like that. They just chose to do a show about Portland. And uh, there was another show, and not too long ago, that was set and shot here. Um, it was called Grim. Was it called Grim? I never watched it. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Grimm was done there, yeah. But it was about people as opposed to only a certain age of people. Well, it was a horror show. Yeah, well, and, I mean, and, and what, all kinds and, of genres. And what's know? the most horrible kind of person? An old person, right? <laughs> <laughs> they, they look spookier than young people look. Right, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, you know, you... So what, are those all DVDs behind you? Yes, they are. Do you still watch DVDs? Well, you see, you may notice there's a there's a blank area over here. Maybe you can see it. And that is because I've taken a lot of the ones that I really liked and put them on uh, into files for computers. Right. Because those are more playable now. And then I don't have to have all these. But, but you I, do. But I still have, you know, about uh, several thousand left. So it's... Think of all of the formats we have gone through. Not oh, so yeah. much for video, but because they came, that came later. But all of the formats that we've had to go through for keeping up with all our music. I mean, we started with you and, my, you and me at our age with 78 RPMs. Yeah. Then it was most, we, there were a few EPs, and then there were 45s, and then 33s, and then 8-track, and then cassettes, and there's something else in there, I think, uh, then, uh, and finally MP3s. Well, CDs, then... Oh, CDs, I miss, miss you, CDs. You yes. miss CDs, and yes. um, um, yeah, no, that, that you pretty much got it uh, set, but that's over a period of, in my case, 78 years, so... Yeah. That, you know, we, you know, I think we've we're using stone axes when I was born, and now you know we use metal ones. Uh, but but you know what it did? All of those changes, format changes, is over the years what you had to do when you were ready to replace with a new format. Mm -hmm. You had to decide which of what you already had was worth buying again. <laughs> well, here let me give you let me give you one example. Uh, they came out with a James Bond VHS box set years ago i guess maybe up in the, at, at that point it was like 10 movies okay then they come out with the i laser disc you forgot laser disc oh, i had laser, a laser oh, we disc were collection music, not video, though. i had a laser disc collection uh and and i bought all the james bond pictures on laser disc then they released them on VHS in a box set. I bought that. Do you that. really like James Bond that then, much? I have every, almost every James <laughs> Bond set. And believe it or not, there are like about six or seven of them. You know. The latest one is over there in the corner. And it's every movie through uh, Skyfall. So. Is Skyfall, that's a James Bond movie? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. For is those, this because you once did a radio show using the name James Bond? <laughs> well, that has something to do with it. But, you know, I for some reason, I, I, I just always got the newest box set. And I said, to hell with that. And uh, now, you know, I keep everything on, on files that I like because it takes up less room. This, this, I could get rid of all of this if I put every one of them on a DV, on a, uh, a, a video file, and it would take up, uh, it wouldn't even take up a whole disk drive. You, you know. know, I did that only once in my life. I took all my music from CDs and transferred to MP3s. I yeah. had to do it every night after work for months before I finished. I will never do that again. Yeah, but once you do that, you've got them in a more palatable form so far as space is concerned and all of that. You know, plus, you know what I hated about the CD? The worst part about the CD was the jewel case. Those things kept breaking and kept breaking and kept breaking, you know. You would buy one. I don't know one. about you. I didn't have that problem. What? 
of breaking CD cases. Why? They never broke. Me. They they were fragile. They were ridiculous. No, they're not. And you the hinges, the, the hinges they would come off. Out. The hinges would fall apart on them, and oh, it was terrible. <laughs> it was terrible. I had to go out and buy a bunch of cases for them that were good cases, and and replace a lot of them when they broke. So anyway, so what's happening in the world of getting older? Uh, it, it, you know, what issues are affecting your audience? Uh, she, of course, has a wonderful blog called timegoesby.net, which is a blog. It looks like a web page, but it's a blog. And uh, she, uh, you know, deals with the things that have to do with aging, which, by the way, I don't care what age you are listening to this program, eventually you're going to have to deal with it. Is that is that? Eventually, yeah. I just I think that um, there are different things that are important at different ages. I think we should all, in the way that all adults, it's starting very, very, very young, always look out for small children. You'll be sure they don't run in the street if you're around or, you know, do something that's going to maim or kill them, that we all watch out for them carefully. Then there, the other end of that is that as... Old people get less, let's just in one one instance of something that can go wrong, of being less sure on their feet, they need a cane or it's sometimes a wheelchair. We're not, grown-ups are not as good as being careful about old people that could, that could be harmed easily mm -hmm. as they are about young children. And let me give you an example. When I was coming home from the hospital after 11 days after my surgery last June, there's a long hallway when you go through the front door of the hospital, a long hallway to stairs that go down to the street where you get in the car. And I had been cut open, you know, from straight down my middle, the whole middle of me. Mm -hmm. And it was only 11 days, so I was feeling very vulnerable and I couldn't walk very well. And, um, and a friend was pushing me in a wheelchair to get down to the stairs where I could walk down when we get there. And coming toward me in the other direction, was a mother with who was pushing what apparently was her her father probably as old as he was mm -hmm. in a wheelchair and two kids chasing each other down the hall and they veered chasing each other to my side and bumped into my wheelchair and i had visions of being tossed on my side my scar being ripped open oh, <laughs> you know geez. i still had staples in it yeah and um and I realized we do that all the time, that we don't pay, we pay attention to children, to be very careful not to run in the street, for example, but we don't pay as much attention to old people. They're dispensable. And it was, I was so frightened. I was feeling so fragile. And I watch very carefully in a very different way now when I see old people in the street. Are they walking very slowly? Are they steady on their feet? Do they need help down the stairs? Mm -hmm. In ways that even I, who've been writing about this for nearly 15 years, I hadn't paid close attention until that happened to me. And I think it's a common occurrence. We just don't make the same distinction about old people that maybe ha need help or keeping an eye on as we do young people. Now, can, my, my question to you would be, can you, is there such a thing as helping too much? Let me give you an example of what I'm saying. I had a friend who years ago interviewed George Shearing, the jazz pianist. And George Shearing, Lucky was, him. <laughs> George, George Shearing was blind. Uh -huh. And he said, what is the worst part about being blind? He said, there's nothing really terrible about being blind except people who want to help you. He said, I've almost had my arm ripped off by people trying oh, to help me. Absolutely. But all you have to do is is a simple, can I help you? And people are, then can yeah. say, no, I'm doing yeah. fine. Yeah. That's all you need In to do. In other words, don't assume that you need to help. Ask right. what help they might need. Right. Yeah. And yeah. so if you see, let's say, someone hesitating at a, at a curb, mm -hmm. stepping down, mm -hmm. you can say, can I help you get down that curb? And they can say yes, or they can say yes, or they can say, no, I think I can manage. I'm just slow or whatever they want to say. You know? yeah. um, and that's that's very simple to get around. And I think that Shearing had a point. You know, we can yeah. overdo those things. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was something he, he lived in, you know, a situation he lived through. And uh, it, uh, it, it was a, uh, uh, how can we put it? It was a, uh, um, um, 
it, it, it was just something that he had to deal with on a rather constant basis. So, you know, it's uh, whatever. Hold on a second. I just, I, I, my screen froze up here and I'm trying to fix it here so that I can, okay, well, we'll, we'll use that. Okay, there we go, folks. Okay, following along in the yeah. same way is, you know, I've always thought of curb cuts in, mm -hmm. in, in on sidewalks when you get to the corner. Yeah. I always thought of curb cuts for like mothers with, you know, strollers for their babies and people with um, uh, bicycles or something like that. Um, and in the past few years, I've realized that they're really good for old people just walking. They don't have to deal with the curb. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> or in wheelchairs. Uh, it hadn't occurred to me when I was younger. And one really important thing about um, a, a, what would be uh, of how we help people that may be disabled in some way is that anything is good for old people that helps old people. And an example are I don't know if you have them there in New York, but here most of the grocery stores along all the aisles have magnifying glasses hanging so you can read the small print on the can or the package you're trying to buy. Yeah. And more and more of them are putting benches in supermarkets so old people can stop and rest. But anything that you do for old people that helps them mm -hmm. always helps people of every age. Yeah. And that's what people have to understand when municipalities and other entities start thinking about how much money it costs to make life easier for old people. You're never only helping old people. In the case of a bench, maybe you're helping a mother with a fussy child in the supermarket uh, right. who won't shut up. Right. So she can sit down for a few minutes and calm the kid. Or maybe her feet are tired, you know, and she needs to sit down. Um, and that's really important when, um, when governments are considering spending of that kind to help old people because they help everybody. Does the government care about helping old people? Do you really have the feeling that they genuinely care about old people or they just put up with them? You know, I, I don't, don't get. Think I've I, ever put any great deal of thought to that. That's a well, really terrible question. Well, no, but it, I don't it, mean terrible. I, to I, ask. I feel I mean, I, awful thing to think about. I have this feeling that in many ways the government is out to kill us early. Here's how, why I say that. What, what do they do when they say, we need money, we're spending too much money, what program shall we cut? What oh, is Social the Security first and Medicare. one? Well, yes, exactly. <laughs> now those are, Medicare, I gotta tell you, Medicare is a lifeline when you get older, okay? Tell me about it. <laughs> I'm not employed, I'm on a limited income, my Social Security, my wife works, but I'm lucky for that. But the fact of the matter is that aside from that, the one thing medically that I have is Medicare, and thank God through sag after I got a great supplemental program. Uh, but the fact is that if they cut away Medicare, wait a minute, hold on, folks. What happens to old people? You one know? of the ways they first cut it that makes it difficult for old, but it's not directly to you and me and other people who use Medicare, they start chipping away at how much they pay the doctors and the hospitals. Oh, and the that's clinics. getting terrible already. I feel sorry for yes. my doctors. Yes, and that means there's there are doctors that just can't afford to take Medicare and especially Medicaid patients anymore. And that's what that's before they've come to take it away from us that we won't you know we won't pay yeah. as much for whatever it is you know make you pay for half of it instead. First, they're doing that. You know, and then there's Paul Ryan, who have, you know has wanted to complete, completely cut Social Security. And the thing about Paul Ryan and Social Security is that he got through, I think I've told you this, that he got through college on Social Security because his father died young. But he still wants to take away Social Security. What, what, what is, what's in his head? What's in any of their heads? I mean, it's almost like they, they figure... <laughs> I guess maybe they figure old people won't complain because they're too invalid to, to complain or whatever, you know. And and it's just, and I think that if they were to like cut Medicare or something, there would be less of a hue and cry about that than a lot of other things, uh, even the gun thing. They're less of a hue and cry about that because it's just affecting old people. Forget that. It doesn't affect me. I'm young, right? I think there would be a, a good amount of of yelling and screaming about Medicare. And also, whenever they do surveys about such things, Social Security is the most popular 
a government program that America has. There's nothing that is more popular. It's, it's the percentage of numbers are up there around 90 that every of every age, not just old people. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think that if you tried to do anything about Social Security, drastic, they're already chipping away at it, um, that there will be a gigantic, anything that would cut the monthly income from it would, re- the, the hue and cry you'd be able yeah, well, to get from be, my place to Well, I mean, to begin your- with, that, let's be honest, it's money they owe us. You know, yes. it's not like we, we got it for free. We paid for it as we worked all these years. Okay, and it's called an earned benefit, it, not an entitlement. Right. You brought that up, and I think that's a great way of putting it. But now let's get to Medicare. Okay, yes. if that were stripped away, as Ryan would like to see it done, and he's not the only one. Let's be fair. What is that. going to replace health care for older people? Nothing. God, what, do you, what do you do at this point? Because we planned our whole lives for what was available to us and what we paid into and what we were able to save our whole lives for their, when we went. By the way, it's not that we can't work anymore, many of us. They just won't hire us because we have gray hair or no hair. Right, you know? exactly. Um, no doesn't hair. Mean we, Um, is that why you wear a hat? All not the time? Re- not really. It's just, I mean, I mean, uh, I don't think this looks unattractive. Okay, uh, but uh, I do it because to begin with, guys who are bald wear caps not to hide the baldness, but because if they don't and they're out in the sun. Oh, it's, you get cold. Oh, you also get cold in the winter time. Yeah. Now, when I had hair, I, that was my cap. You know, right. I mean, and, and during the winter, you need it for the cold. And but you know what? You're you're almost 15 years older, I think, 10, 15, 10 or 15 years older than your father when he died. But and he was in his mid 60s and he had a gorgeous. Head no, of he hair was still. he was 59. Right, he still had a beautiful head of hair. Yeah, He did have a good head of hair. Well, you, but you 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 get it from your your mother. You don't get it from your father. Who says uh, supposedly you get it from your, <laughs> no, from your maternal grandfather. My fraternal grandfather was bald. Okay. Okay. So yes. go figure. All right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so anyway, um, where, where were we? Oh, so anyway, all I'm saying is I just think less people, w- I, you, I don't want to have to see it happen so that I can say, see, I was right. <laughs> Please. But. Uh, less people would complain about the fact that people got done, Medicare got done away with, than uh, a lot of other issues that we have in this society. And this, you know, I feel that Paul Ryan, by saying he wants to do away with Medicare, is out to kill me. Okay, because you know, right now more- I don't, I don't need major medical care right now, but who knows down the line? Like you didn't well, think you did like either. What happened to me? Yeah. But more and more people way, in, in case, Washington, in which case of course it, means... Wait a minute. In case they don't know, uh, uh, Ronnie uh, came down with a touch of the pancreatic cancer. <laughs> yeah, uh, you should see what a touch of that is like. Yeah. Um, there, when I, a, lot of, a lot more voices, when I say that, I might be talking about five at the moment, yeah. are talking about single payer for everybody, you know, Medicare for everybody. Right. And the fact is that all Western democracies consider health care a right and people pay a higher taxes not just like our little medicare tax but on their general taxes to support health care uh, for everybody and i surely would be willing to do that to be guaranteed that you can't be turned away which is how it works in all of the western democracies i'm not saying there aren't some problems with those health care systems but nothing like the problems we have have you ever noticed every once in a while they don't do enough of it Every once in a while, a local TV station, or sometimes the national, will cover a medical clinic or a dental clinic. And a whole bunch of doctors come from around a certain area. Mm-hmm. They set up tents, and people come who, can't, who don't have medical coverage and who don't ha- can't afford to see doctors, and they can go and see a doctor. Or and sometimes it's a dental clinic. But, and by yeah. the way, Medicare does not cover dentistry. No, I know. And it doesn't cover hearing aids. Um, and it doesn't cover teeth unless the teeth are related to some other problem in your body uh which is something it's a whole thing we could discuss sometime about why that is um and we have these things especially in the good weather are all over the united states and there are lines and lines and lines out the doors of people who can't afford to go to a doctor that's in the united states of america and nobody makes a big deal of it it's terrible 
It's terrible. Also, also in a lot of countries, uh, let's talk about younger people, uh, uh, free education, even into college, you know? Uh, yeah. You know, I mean, there are certain things that other countries feel is not a right. It is a necessity. It is something you need to have. And the idea of people not having medical care, I mean, the reason the British started the British health system was because of World War II. They felt they owed themselves a, a gift. And this I didn't was, know that. And this I was, the, that. yeah, this was initiated right after the war. They decided that gift was going to be that everybody could have health care for free. Mm -hmm. And you know something? Doctors don't starve over there. They get two hundred thousand dollars a year, maybe more. They they also get paid for uh, they get paid extra for patients whose health is kept at a good clip you know in other words they look at their record of how healthy their patients are and if they're healthy enough they give them a little bonus too so i didn't know any of that yeah i mean it's it's pretty damn good they are they've been taught you know there are still those guys in england who keep going but well, we got to do away with uh with uh, i forget what it's called uh, national health that's it we right. got to do away with national health uh but most of the time they get yelled down yeah. I want to make a complete circle here because I think you said earlier that you don't understand people who want to take away health care yeah. or Social Security. Yeah. And I that's one of the puzzles that I have that I think about from time to time is whether it's Paul Ryan or anywhere else, anyone else, um, is what do those people think who, who, by the way, the people in Congress have their own health care that is just sensationally good. Yeah. What do they think everybody is going to do without those things um, or without doing something about the costs of, of oh, I'll medi I'll I'll get, I'll, medical I'll, coverage I'll, I'll, I'll give you the people in the in-between years? I'll give you the answer, the one they'll give you. Well, we think that private industry could take care of that. You know, the privatization of all of that would be just fine. That these companies would – look at what they're doing to us now for just what little – health care you buy out there it's it's horrible i mean even uh it used to be that you could get there was a there's a thing we're going over our 25 minutes but i got i got we got to get this in uh, the, uh there was like a, you and i are going to solve the problems of well the we're not going to solve today. the problem now i forgot what i was going to say see that's another thing we need some kind of mental health uh, <laughs> what was your name again <laughs> It, it's getting harder every day to remember, okay? <laughs> you know, there was this ad on TV about a woman who got Alzheimer's and the way her husband found out is she left her keys in the refrigerator. And I've done that at age 30. Well, I'm waiting for the day I find keys in the refrigerator and it's either mine or it's Marjorie's, you know? Uh, well, I actually did that when I was in my 30s, that I looked was trying to leave the house and looking all over for the keys. Yeah. And I don't know why I opened the refrigerator door, but there they were next to the milk. Oh, well, <laughs> and I, I guess that ad was just trying to point up what... Speaking of ads, was. I wanted to say one thing about it, about ads before we go, is you know that the doctors have pronounced me cancer-free from pancreatic cancer. Yeah. And, of course, it can always re recur and... No, unlike you, I'm not a hypochondriac, but it's in the it's shadow in the back of my mind. Yeah. But at any rate, right now, I'm cancer-free. You have no idea what happens. It, it, it just that you become more alert to it is it seems that every time I turn on television, there's some commercial for pancreatic cancer. I really, really? don't want to hear about I have, pancreatic I, cancer I haven't anymore. seen a single ad for pancreatic cancer. And, you know. and, and when I'm... You know, a few times, I didn't delve deeply into pa pancreatic cancer, but I did some looking around and reading some stuff online. Yeah. It follows me everywhere online. There's always a little <laughs> ad somewhere about pancreatic cancer. <laughs> well, I just want them to shut up. <laughs> well, uh, well, probably it's that Analytics Corporation that... Uh, Analytica, right. Yes. Analytica, and they, uh, they also did a thing on old people and found out where to place the pancreatic cancer commercials for you. <laughs> Well, actually, from what I heard on some TV show this morning, is that it, it allows them to go out and see what you search for, too. They can they can attach searches to certain people. Yeah. So I get the pancreatic ads, and 
you get whatever you get <laughs> medically. I get the ads for DVDs. Uh, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. It's time for us to go. Yeah, I know. Uh, it's, uh, and, uh, it's far too soon. I love having these uh, conversations with you. But you're... I'm not sure that there's an audience for our chit chat. You, you know? know something? I don't give a shit. It's my <laughs> network. I pay for it. Uh, it goes out. Uh, if people watch it, even a few of them, and they they are interested in what we have to say, then that that that's enough for me. I'm never going to make a penny off of this thing, so I don't care about ratings. You know, uh, I would love thousands of people to watch what you have to say because I think all of it is very important and vitally important to every American because age is somewhere where, if we're lucky, we're all going to wind up. OK. Right. And if you think this was a boring conversation, you're going to be having that conversation constantly once you reach 60. Every dinner you go out to with other people your age, you're all going to say the same thing. Well, how's your uh, what you, what's happening with your uh, uh, health insurance and blah, blah, insurance, blah. Right. Yeah. One of the th one of the oldest sayings about aging that I like a lot yeah. is that everybody wants to live a long time, but nobody wants to get old. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we shall leave you. Ronnie Bennett, the, as I like to say, the only Bennett in this room who really legally has that name. Did we explain that? We'll let it go. We'll yeah, do it well, we, we, I think we've explained it. Okay. Great talking to you. Ladies and gentlemen, there she is. Go to uh, uh, timegoesby.net, okay? Yes. And that will reach you and it will reach her blog, which is Time Goes By. Time goes by .net. Read it. It's terrific. We'll see you in a couple of weeks, okay? Okay. Take care, darling. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gabby, the Great American Broadcast Network. And here we are. I really, I enjoyed talking to Ronnie. <laughs> More so than when we were married. Uh, you know, she is she, just a brilliant woman who is doing just a terrific job uh, uh, with her blog. And as you can see, she looks really healthy, too, which I'm happy about. Speaking of health, uh, I, I got uh, I, I put it up on my uh, Facebook page. I got a piece of uh, email of uh, Facebook Messenger, which I've been going back and forth with Phil on all day. And uh, Phil is uh, out of the uh, operating room, and he's staying the night in the hospital. And then he will be out of the hospital, I guess, tomorrow. He claims if he has a chance, he's going to try and call the show tonight. Uh, but I told him, look, you know, you're a trooper, but please, you know, get your rest. Take care of yourself. But maybe we'll hear from him. Maybe we won't. We would like to hear from you. Let me just turn this damn uh, thing on and we can start going on it hey a few things i want to tell you our lines are open by the way uh, uh I, we f I fixed something after a long time uh, we have always had an app for your android phone there's always been a great american broadcast that's what it's called great american broadcast app that was made what uh, maybe four years ago three and a half years ago and when we changed the place that we send out our show from, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, stream, uh, the audio stream, uh, it, it changed. And we didn't, uh, we didn't have a, uh, I, I couldn't, get, it was hard coded into that Android uh, thing. And so consequently, uh, I was, you never, if you went, you use the Android, it had all the shows like my show and, and, uh, uh what's his name show up, uh, the, uh, the, uh, intersection and it had the exchange and all of that. But if you pressed on live, it didn't play. Well, I got a hold of the guy in Europe who programmed this thing originally and I fixed it and, uh, it's all, he fixed it. And now anytime I change my stream for the encoder or whatever i can do it myself and it's up and running again so go uh go to the uh, google store the google play store whatever they call it and uh, go type in great american broadcast the app will come up and it will install it into your phone okay simple easy peasy and uh, also i noticed that my we have a gabnet tv uh where i got a lot of videos 
And it was, something was really wrong with it because most of it wasn't working. And so I did some stuff and figured out what was wrong. And now it's working again. And I added uh, Clayton's uh, show from the other night. So that's up there too. Look, who was the first person here. He's been adjusting all kinds of things. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what you've been adjusting, but uh, I hope it's adjusted. What, what, what was all the wiring and stuff that you were oh, reading? Oh, my, my microphone wire was wound around the stand and i needed to close the door that ladies and gentlemen is the lovely visage of ray <laughs> ray renati Mat Hello. our matinee idol on this show yes <laughs> my matinee idol i'm going to be starting a rehearsal in in a couple of weeks alex so i i might not be on calling in much oh really at night because i gotta have rehearsal pro at night quite yeah. often probably yeah well uh call him when you can month. and then when yeah, you're okay. and i uh, how long is the play going to run once you it's only a couple weeks uh it's, it's a brand new play small company but the rehearsal will be like three or four weeks yeah now that's the yeah. funny part about it i remember we used to rehearse three four upwards to five weeks on a play that then they played for one weekend you know? Yeah, it's, yeah. With new plays, that happens sometimes. You know, because it's like a workshop production, and hopefully they'll they'll have a bigger one later. But yeah. you know, they don't know if they're going to be able to get the audience. Well, we'll so miss you. You can, you you can if you find that you get have some time after your rehearsal to call, give us a call. You know. Yeah, uh, won't be done. Be done. Hey, here comes everybody. Here comes everybody. They're starting to wander in here. Um, but we, we, we'll be happy when your play is over with and you're back with us, but that'll Thanks. be, that's still a couple of weeks away, right? Yeah. 28th. I started. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah. you know, we miss you, but anytime you can find a spare moment to call us, do it. Okay. I will. Uh, for sure. there's Rob and there's Bob Eberth. And, um, I heard from Phil, as you heard me, maybe heard me say, and uh, Phil is, uh, I have a picture of him that he sent me that I put on my Facebook page of him in the hospital bed. Nobody ever looks well in a hospital bed, you know? Uh, in fact, does he have the stuff in, uh, uh, does he have anything hooked to him here that I can, that I can see? Um, let me see here. No, there's nothing really that he's hooked to. So it's just him looking kind of like, he's in that, in those ter one of those terrible uh, nightgowns that they give you in the hospital because they want to make you feel all the air hitting your ass. Uh, why? It, it, hello, John. Hello, Jeff. Um, let me ask you. Let me ask Jeff a question because he knows hospitals more than the rest of us because he's dealt in the medical industry and so on. Can't they come up with a better gown than the hospital gown? <laughs> a good idea. You know, I, I wore one of those things for four and a half days, and I, it was just, you know, the only the only thing it was good for was taking a dump because you could just lift it up and, you know, do what you had to do. But you can't undo it because the, the, uh, uh, they strap it in the back, right? You know, yeah. so I'm, I, I just, you know. Um, well, you, you have to design a hospital gown that looks like your plaid pants, you know, just so that you can wear your plaid oh, pants. Oh, yeah, that'll, that'll, that'll be real cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, um, no, but it, it uh, I, I just wonder why they, why those gowns are so oh, wow. ugly, so damn ugly. And, you know, uh, uh, Phil can use every glamour device he can find, and that isn't one of them. So, hey, Phil, hey, is, if he's watching, uh, shout out to Phil. Yes. Of hey, course. Phil. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, hey, you know, Alex, those gowns, I did, I, I had this job for quite a while that I would do once in a while. I was a standardized patient at, at Stanford and USF. <laughs> what do you mean a standard? <laughs> like, working wait, 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 hold, with hold, the medical hold, student. Hold, hold on a second. What is it? What is a standardized patient? So you you go it like you play you they they tell you to be you have to play a character like I was always a middle aged dude who couldn't feel his feet I mean I, that's why I quit because I got sick of playing that guy uh, <laughs> it's like Seinfeld but, exactly on Seinfeld exactly. They, they, there was a Seinfeld episode where Kramer was doing that so those gowns I I got really good at putting them on I can actually put it on and tie it and everything and so now when I go to the doctor and I tie it right and I get it on they're always so surprised like wow you actually know how to you actually know how to put that thing on yeah, we, we purposely <laughs> you're the only person who ever able to do it we purposely made them this way so you wouldn't be able to yeah you know? 
Uh-oh. But I could do it like that now, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, what, what was this? Yeah. Were you acting like you had a disease or something? Was that yes. the thing? It was like on Seinfeld. Exactly. And what did like they give that. Kramer, like gonorrhea or something like yeah, that? Yeah, I didn't have anything fun. Like, I always was like the middle aged guy who drank too much, who couldn't feel as the bottom of his legs. But well, someone next door to me always got to play the schizophrenic or something, which yeah. would be a which would have been a blast. Yeah, but he, I never got to do you that. You can't really so chew I up. Quit. I mean, like I have numbness in my feet, and you really can't chew up the scenery doing that. No, it's just boring. <laughs> it's yeah. just boring. What was Kramer yeah. doing though? It was with uh, with I think he he was gonorrhea, wasn't it, Rob? Yeah, if you remember, it was Kramer? him and the the little guy who he was doing it with, and they were arguing over who was going to play who. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah, like pulled his, and he's Kramer. going like, and so one, one night of thrilling adventure was uh, blah 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 blah. You know, <laughs> he was right. playing it up to the hilt, you know. But that's yeah. Uh, yeah, they do pay people for doing that. Is is yeah. Uh, one time, the, the the best one I ever did was I was actually usually it was with students, but there were doctors who signed up uh, a year in advance. They went to the seminar and they could have. Uh, Any time during that year, a standardized patient could come in, and they wouldn't know it. So at one time, I was spying on a doctor, and they put a tape recorder in a glass in a case, you know, for like glasses. Yeah. And I brought it in, and I was recording the whole thing. And she goes, "Do you want to read a magazine?" And I had the tape recorder on top of the magazine. She pulls the magazines. The glass case falls open, and the recorder falls on the floor. <laughs> okay. And I'm like, oh shit! And it was like under, like barely under the table. And it's like, and she didn't see it. I don't. And I was like, oh god, thank god. And then, or she pretended like she didn't. I don't know. It was horrible. Ah oh, yes, life in the theater. <laughs> well, I got twenty bucks an hour. Or so, yeah, well, know, big that's, dollars. Where, where do I sign up? You know, I'm, I don't <laughs> even get that doing this. Let's see if he did. What? How? And how many hours was it? I was like full time when I did it. Like eight hours a day? Yeah. Really? Wow. So you spent all day in a hospital gown? Yeah. Oh my God. Wow. How did you and, stop them if they didn't know like who you were? I mean that you were an actor. Uh-huh. How did how did you stop them from doing shit to you? What do you mean? Like what kind of shit? What, what, no, wait, I don't know. Wait, I mean, you, you couldn't you could you need surgery. <laughs> Yeah, no, you... okay, no, like, no, look, when you did it with the students, they knew what the, uh, you were an actor because they were just learning how to how to do it. But when you yeah. did it with the real doctors, they didn't know because we even had fa- fake phone numbers, fake social security numbers, everything. Um, I hope he- I hope fake health insurance as well. We did. <laughs> we had fake health insurance. <laughs> I only did it once, so I, I – they. I don't know. I only did that one once, you know, like with three doctors. Nobody did anything weird to me. Wow. Thank God. What like a, bend what over or anything like that. Uh, yeah. I'm not a real patient, but I play one on TV. Imagine, <laughs> imagine if they got clued in that you were an actor and they decided, I'm going to fuck with this guy. That would be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 the um, the supervising physician knew about it. And when the when she brought in the supervising physician, because they were interns, the the supervising physician was totally overacting. Like, oh, so how are you doing today? <laughs> oh, oh, so your feet hurt, huh? Hmm, interesting. I mean, it was ridiculous. She was a regular Sarah Bernhardt. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, ridiculous. Wow. Yeah. I mean, if the other doctor didn't know by then. You know, we should take that improv of, of yeah. pretending like you have a disease and, and put it on Broadway. <laughs> I thought you were going to say do a game show no, here no, on, put, on it, app. put it on Broadway. Oh, for sure. You, you know, I could write and, that and, play. And, and just, you know, have people watch actors act like they have diseases. This would be, I think, a major you know hit. That's great, Alex. Yeah. I'll, write the, I'll write the play. I will write it. But you don't have to really write it. Isn't it improv? Well, I mean, if it's going to be on Broadway, you're going to have to write it. I don't know if they'll ever do improv on Broadway. Like you ask the audience, right? To yeah. suggest diseases, yeah, and then then the, oh I see right yeah, yeah. and then uh, like whose line is it anyway yeah, and then backstage you look the one and then on stage yeah. you hand them the card the actors and now the people in the audience have to figure out what the disease is yeah yes Bob and they can have little earpieces in where backstage they're giving them little sim- <laughs> symptoms to act out so. <laughs> Yeah, Bob. Went, went into the Air Force uh, way back in 69. 
uh, your first few days in basic training, you were called a rainbow because you didn't have a, a uniform and everyone had different colored clothes. And you would hear the story of the square needle in the left nut. And all the way <laughs> basic training you hear about the square needle in the left nut. What's the square and, need needle in the left nut? You would get it during your last uh, physical before leaving basic training. Wait a minute, so, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. They, why? But they, I was well, in basic training. They never stuck a, 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 a needle in my haystack. Basically, uh, this is all you would hear during basic training was about that last day in the square needle and the left nut. Oh, I see. But oh, it never happened. We would go in for that final physical, and of course, there was no square needle in a left nut. Yeah. But every one of us oh, would I walk see. out holding our nuts yeah. and <laughs> see these rainbows. Some of them actually pass out. Don't touch my nads. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Basic hazing. <clears throat> yeah. Ba basic hazing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, listen, we're, um, we're sitting here in New York. Are you ready? Has it come to you yet, um, um, Rob, where you live? Or are you, uh, we, Bob? So we went through this uh, winter with no snow. And we've got about four inches now, and I think they said any time around 10 o'clock, it's supposed to start snowing and snow until 10 p.m. tomorrow night. So, it, Well, we, what we got was it starts here at midnight and won't end until 6 o'clock in the morning on Thursday. Mm. And, and look, look at, the, uh, look at Jeff. Jeff's ready to freeze his ass off. In spring. I'm in Georgia today. Oh, I see. Ah, oh, oh, you I'm pussy. You, 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 I'm you, supposed you to pussied be. out on us. No, I have an airplane on Thursday. Oh, you're never coming. You're never getting home. So. You think I'll make it? No. I don't think so. I don't think that thing's even taken off. It could be nope. sunny in Georgia. That's what will piss you off. Yep. It could be sunny in Georgia. But if there's a lot of snow on the ground in New York, that plane ain't going. Well, wow, they ground all kinds of flights, and then everything gets screwed up because planes aren't where they're supposed to be. And it's a nightmare. Guess who's calling us? But he's going to be audio only. I can tell. Uh, hello, Phil Meyer. Hey, Phil. I just want to say hi to everybody. Yeah. And uh, thank you for uh, you know all those well wishes. Yeah, yeah. And and how are uh, and how are you feeling? Uh, well. Uh, you know, the, the best thing that can happen to me tonight is a bowel movement. <laughs> <laughs> God, that's awesome. Well, I mean, yeah, you're not going to have yeah. one on that food. Um, uh, no. no, well, I haven't had anything for two days. Uh, just sips of water. Mm -hmm. Uh, I haven't felt like having anything. I what a way to lose weight. Well, I guess. Diet. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll have, so, so the operation went fine, no problems. Uh, well, you know, he, uh, the uh, anesthesiologist came in uh, afterwards, and he said that I was really tough to incubate, uh, you know, putting the tube down my throat. <laughs> and uh, he says, you have sleep apnea? I says, yes. And he says, you said you have a severe case of sleep apnea? I said, yes, I do. He said, this is the most severe case I've ever seen. Your airway closed up completely. Uh, you were thrashing around. 90-pound nurses were being uh, fl uh, flung about in the operatory. <laughs> and uh, he said uh, he had to put a trumpet up my nose. Uh, a trumpet is some other kind of breathing device. And uh, yeah, I'm glad I was out for that. Oh, boy. Uh, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm glad you're out. Uh, yeah, but you were flinging nurses left and right. It's kind of like you treat us here. What a uh, troublemaker! Uh, yeah, what a even troublemaker. when you're yes. even when you're like dead to the world, you're causing problems. Even when you're, but at least yeah, he had exactly. something Trumpy uh, up his nose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a trumpet. Yeah, it's a trumpet. <laughs> but uh, so, so uh, but uh, yeah, so your throat's okay though. It doesn't hurt or anything from the. No, no, I'm, I, I, that part's fine. Stomach is a little sore. Mm -hmm. I don't have a lot of abdominal strength. Mm -hmm. And uh, I sent Faye out to Bed Bath & Beyond to get me one of those uh, pillows they advertise on TV that's like a wedge. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. It's called the Bro uh, the a Brookstone wedge. Pillow. Yeah. Those are great. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's not bad. And uh, one of the best things I did was bring my own pillow 
to the to the uh, to the hospital. Uh, I mean, I have one of those cervical pillows. Yeah, Ray should be familiar with those. Yeah, yeah. And uh, oh, boy. so yeah. now, now so the prostate's gone. Yes. Yeah. Did they let you and, keep it in a jar or anything? Like to bring <laughs> home? No, they're gonna they're gonna send it out for pathology. <laughs> Oh. Uh, and I'm not 100% sure they may have taken a lymph node or two just to uh, see if there was any, uh, what I think he called it, breakage of the thing. But, uh, yeah, I'll know in a week or so after the pathology comes back yeah. uh, whether I'm cancer-free. Wouldn't it be fun if it came uh, back and they said, turns out you didn't have prostate cancer. No. <laughs> uh, you, you know that that's occurred to me. Yeah. No, they always. <laughs> that's, I, that's I think uh, Jeff. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. They will. usually <laughs> always take lymph nodes when there's any sus suspicion of you know if you're taking out something because it's cancerous. They always take the lymph nodes too, right? To test. I. You know, I don't know if that's a hundred percent that everybody has it, but I've heard it quite frequently. So uh, I know they probably right. They did it with my with my ex wife when she had a pancreatic cancer. Yeah. Uh, you know to but, you know, be two, five years ago, very few people had the surgery. What prostate surgery? Yeah, they did. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's a Da Vinci machine. It's called a Da Vinci machine. It's uh, yes. uh, quite. Uh, they actually make you go. They put you upside down on the table when you <clears> operate. And oh. so that your uh, so that your organs fall away from the prostate. Oh, okay. yeah. They used to just leave it in because it, it would be so slow growing. They figured you'd kick the bucket from something else before that got. To well, you. his was a little more aggressive than that, right, uh, Phil? Well, uh, yes and no. I had a high uh, PSA. <laughs> um, I don't know how aggressive it is. I guess I'll find out once they do the pathology for sure. But um, uh, I'm, I think it was the right thing to do, and it just took me uh, a year or so to wrap my head around it. Yeah, what, uh, wrap your head around it or stick your head up your ass? Yeah, well, what? You, know. you know, you go through the, a grieving process. There's, there's a grieving process, uh, almost like the same grieving process you have when you get divorced or, you, or someone close to you dies. Uh, there's, there's a, Wait a minute, a, you a grieved when grieving. you got divorced? Uh, yeah, oh, you know, I okay. had family, my family was split up. It was, uh, well, by the, you know, by the, th out of my house. by the third it one for me, it was, for, by the time the third one happened, it was easy peasy for me. <laughs> uh, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of an attitude of, I've seen him come and I've seen him go, you know, so. Yeah. Hey, Alex, yeah. Ronnie's just wonderful though. I really, I really enjoy listening to her. Oh yeah. She's terrific. She's terrific. Yeah. 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 Yeah, uh, yeah. Most of the women in my life have been terrific. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, huh? <laughs> uh, no, it, it doesn't mean that you're going to be married to him. You know, no, I get it. I you're going to be able to have that kind. The, you know, I'm so happy that as the years have gone on, she and I have become very good friends. You know, mm -hmm. because yeah. there was that's a, rare. Yeah, uh, and uh, uh, I, I'm good friends with my uh, third uh, ex-wife, and I'm. Uh, I think I'm friends with Marjorie. I haven't decided yet. I, 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 <laughs> Why don't you? Do, I always, I always consider Susan. What were you going to say? Uh, I, no, I no, wait a minute. No, wait. Rob asked me a question. Mm -hmm. Rob asked. Why don't you do like a series and and like you know you're you're having Ronnie on. Why don't you have your third ex-wife on? You have your current wife on every Friday night, and you can. I, do like I would have my third ex-wife on, but uh, she's not in. It, it. I really wouldn't want to put her in front of the public. Okay, so. How yeah. about the young one you used that you were going out with, like in the mid '80s? Uh, the really young girl. You never married her, right? No, never married her. And then, uh, yeah, and oh, then, okay. then she came back into my life, and she dumped me again ten years later. So I, oh. no, I don't, I don't know if I want. I mean, I don't have anything against her, and if she wanted to call the show, I would love to hear from her. But you know, uh, it, well, it, it, I always, I always liked uh, your third wife, Susan. Yeah, she was smart. She was. Funny. Yeah. She was beautiful. Yep. Uh, and uh, uh, Ro John was, Rockwell, who just person. came on, it just put his thumbs up on that. Susan. Susan yeah. was the one I knew from New York. Yeah. Lovely, yeah. lovely lady. Right. Definitely. Right. In fact, Alex, you, huh? you could do like a panel of ex-wives instead of us, and I bet you'd get a lot more listeners. <laughs> just have like battle of ex-wives. 
Yeah, and and and, and 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 what we do during the show is make sure I have a loaded pistol on the desk here. Exactly. So if I if I want to leave the discussion, I've got a way out. You know. Uh, by the way, before I go to you, Jeff, John Rocco, you were actually at my wedding to my third wife. Sure was. Yeah. At the um, oh, what was it called? That uh, her 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 father ran the uh, yeah uh, the, it was the the, Jewish, uh, the workman's uh, circle. The Bund. The Workman Workman Circle. Yeah, the right. Bund, right. Down 30s oh, in wow. the town. Yeah. It was a lovely wedding. It was a lovely <laughs> wedding, and we did a video <laughs> of it. We did a video of it. I don't have it anymore, but we shot some gag scenes, like of me at the uh, table after the wedding and everything, uh, supposedly getting a blowjob from somebody who wasn't my newly acquired hey, wife. Hey, did that the was... audio go bad all of a sudden? What? You guys? No. No. My I, audio went bad. No. Yeah, mine did earlier too, but now it's okay. Yeah, well, it sort of cuts in and out a little bit. It's as long bad. as it's okay here, because that's what's going out to everybody else. But anyway, Phil, so you're when I, yeah, Phil. When I listened to the feed earlier, yeah, uh, it would uh, repeat some sentences. It was like, uh, yeah, uh, mm. yeah I, and it might have just been me. I don't know. No, no, that happens was, a lot now. That happens a lot. Yeah. And it's not just not just here. I think it's a built in thing that they do with some of these services so there's not blank spots. They just repeat uh what huh. you just said. Yeah. It's, it seems huh. to me that that's what they're doing. But mm. I but I listen to the to our output here uh when I'm not on the air. And it, it sounds fine. You know, it sounds great. Um oh, this and, was the live thing. Yeah, yeah, and now you can everybody you can go get that Android app again. It's called Great American Broadcast. Uh, it's got our old logo on it and all of that. We couldn't change that, but we now have it so that it's fully functional and runs the live programming on the app along with four of the past day shows of each of the different oh, shows. Nice. So um, uh, yeah. it is available now. Uh, but hey. How did you get uh, that, Alex? Oh, oh, sorry. What? What? Wait a minute. Uh, let's see. Who? Phil? What? I just. I was just wondering. Yeah, I was, about the app. Oh, never mind. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, hold on a second. I'll, I'll get to you, back to you on that one, Ray. Yes, Phil. Yeah, I was just going to derail the show uh, before I get off. I figured, uh, uh, you know, uh, if you have a road flare, you can shut down the city of Austin, Texas. Right now, you could. Yeah. 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 One yeah. road flare. Yeah. Uh, in a, in a box of old clothes. Yeah, and uh, they are they are so on edge. Would you want uh, to be a FedEx but, uh, or a UPS driver? Yeah, uh, FedEx, FedEx, or or UPS. I mean, any truck, anybody yeah, who delivers, you. you know. Yeah, and this guy. Oh, and tripwires. Some kids were were riding their bicycles, or some people were. I don't know if they were kids. They were riding their bicycles, and they went over a tripwire, and it set off a device. What did what did you do? Did you, did you uh, have like have Fox News on in your ears while you were out on the operating table? Uh, no, no, I had my phone and I was just reading the uh, oh, I see. the the feed. Right. Hey, uh, matter of fact, they, they they couldn't find the remote for my room, and uh, so when they turned on the TV manually, Kaiser doesn't have too many channels. Uh, QVC was one of the biggest uh, oh, God. Uh, ones that they had. Did you buy anything? And, and, and good, Do you know no, what? You know what? I, America. You, okay, let me tell you what I bought. Can I tell you what I bought yeah. on Amazon yesterday? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I I oh. bought a book. Uh, really? Yeah. Anybody watch John Oliver this week? No. Yeah. Okay. Oh, he came out I, with that I book. Record, I, I haven't finished watching it. Yes. It, I it, it, uh, it seems as though. Um, uh, Mike Pence has a rabbit, pet rabbit, named Marlon Bundo. <laughs> and so he, they wrote a book about the private life of Marlon Bundo. And mm -hmm. it's published, it was uh, written, I guess, by Mike Pence's wife. And it, it was put on sale Monday. Well, John Oliver, I guess hearing of this way in advance, put out his own book on Sunday. Oh. <laughs> called The Private Life of Marlon Bundo by Marlon Bundo and I can't remember the woman's name, something Tricks, I think is her name. And uh, he said, I, you know, go to Amazon or go to this address and buy it. And we just want to see if we can make, if we can sell more of these and Pence sells of his book. <laughs> he 
did. He, Oliver's book went straight to number one at Amazon, and Pence's is sitting at number five. <laughs> well, you know, if you're a guy like Pence, having a number five is not bad. We will, you know, he's uh, been number two for fourteen months. Yeah, well, all the all the proceeds from both of these books is going to various charities. But I, it, the charity that this the, the book, let me tell you what the book's about. The book is basically about Marlon Bundo meeting another rabbit and falling in love with him. It just happens to be another male rabbit. Ah. Okay, and it's a whole gay sex story, whole, whole gay story about two bunnies falling in love with each other, and why can't we be in love with each other? Nobody says we can't, and it's a it's a tale for kids. Well, that's the Oliver one, right? That's not that's the Pence. The, oh no, that's not the Pence one. But oh, so no, all, the, all, the, all the money, all the like money that. on the <laughs> Oliver one is, is going to uh, I can't remember the name of the foundation. Uh, that uh, goes to help gay rights and gay causes and so on. Mm. And I guess Pence's is going to, I don't know, people want to buy guns or something like that. <laughs> the Pence, the Pence well, story, uh, those two bunnies go to, go to uh, seminars and camp and they learn not to be gay? No, no, no. <laughs> it's a just, I, I, here's what it's like to be the bunny of the vice president. Wow. Yeah. yeah well, you, they mm -hmm. pulled him out of the Nambla meeting. <laughs> <laughs> hey Phil, did you hear about? Uh, I know you've been out of it a little bit. Did you hear about the uh, the guy who's the Fox analyst who quit? Yeah, well, I was almost going to read that story and I didn't have time. What? But tell me the story, Ralph. Yeah, Peter, I, no, I didn't hear about it. Oh, so, this is the great. Lieutenant Colonel who served the military. Uh, he served in the military. He's an analyst for Fox News, a military analyst. Mm -hmm. He quit, but he says he felt compelled to explain during his departure that the company to the from the company to colleagues before skewering the network he has called home for years peters has been uh, telling friends that he planned on leaving the network in a nuclear fashion and he said for four decades he took an oath as uh, a, f a newly f commissioned officer he swore to support and defend the constitution and that oath did not expire when he took off his uniform peters wrote in a letter that he sent to a handful of co colleagues today i feel that fox news is assaulting our constitutional order and the rule of law while fostering corrosive and unjustified paranoia among viewers isn't that one? Oh. Oh. he's now ashamed of being associated yes. with fox news and he's worked there for 10 years Anyway. Yeah, and he's worked there for 10 years. I mean, yeah. is he only coming on to this now? Well, he's you know? saying that I mean, his, his argument is that it's it's just over the last year, it's just like exponentially gotten top. worse. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. that that well. when Ailes uh, passed away and there was really no one at the helm to, to guide the ship, and uh, I think they're desperate for ratings. They're falling behind MSNBC, and that used to be the joke of cable. Yeah, I think you're right, Phil. It always is, is that the, you know, Fox did well during eight years of Obama. And it's, you know, it's always the uh, the other side, well, the opposite. Yeah, I still think Fox is doing OK, though. I, th I, don't, I just don't think it's getting the numbers it used to. But uh, overall, they're still beating out MSNBC and CNN. I'll tell you what, I'm watching well, more. Their, their yeah. top guy, Hannity, is behind Rachel Maddow. Woohoo! So, yeah, and I, you know, personally, I I like the way Rachel Maddow looks in those leather pants, but uh, yeah. uh, much more than that's Hannity. An, yeah, that's an image Hannity behind Rachel Maddow. Ooh, <laughs> 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 took, nice took, took a wow wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. that's well, a little weird, actually. Ah, uh, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Midnight Bloom. Uh, hey. <laughs> 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 you know something in my whole time I, we were we did porn we were involved in the uh, peripheries of the porn business in all the porn i've ever seen i'm sorry i never heard music that went pip, 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 wow wow i never heard i know that. it's true huh it's true. You never hear that. No, I've never heard chicka wow. What, 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 what's the... Uh, wow, chicka pow wow. <laughs> yeah, right. I've never heard that in, the, in a porn film. I've Certainly heard not, not porn that was worth watching anyway. <laughs> really cheap you ass know, porn, probably. The, 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 voice, the voiceover on porn is really all the same. Uh, you know, and, and matter of fact, Alex, it was your wife, Susan, that said, 
you know, uh, <laughs> there's only like a couple of words and they just repeat them like a loop. And, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Pretty much. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. That's pretty much yeah, it. Harder, harder. You know. harder. And it was usually Gilbert now. Gottfried. Who, it was usually Gilbert Gottfried who did most of the voices. <laughs> yes, <too>. right. Exactly. They had a bunch of really weird. <laughs> what, what were you saying? Rob, what Rob, Rob's trying to say. They had a bunch of, sound, of other sound effects like, oh. All the gag. <laughs> well, you know, Sorry. I was thinking one night on on <laughs> this channel of just broadcasting the audio from porn loops, <laughs> and and see how big an audience we get with just the audio from porn loops. I mean, they can't stop been, me. There's nothing porn pornographic about it, you know. The copy you've been threatening that. Yeah. What were you saying? You've been Rob? threatening that. You've been threatening that for four years. I when know. are you going to do it? Um, but is it copyrighted? Uh, I, I'm sure they are, but let them prove that that's their particular track. You yeah, know what I'm saying? In that. other words, uh, I, I would uh, take out any identifiers of, of what was the track, and they would all be kind of loops and stuff like that, you know. By the time I did it, they'd be too late to catch me. So, you know. <laughs> I, you know I'd, I'd be gone. <laughs> You know, it'd just be the audio, yeah. just all night long, just, oh, more, more, do it, more, you know, whatever, <laughs> you know. I'd, I'd find, find yeah. the ones with you, the most you screen. With a picture of uh, Marlon Bundo on the front. With a picture of Marlon Bundo on the front. Bundo, yeah. Bundo on the screen, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, bunnies do it. I, mean. I, I think that was brilliant of John Oliver to do. I just, I, it just, it just it, he, and he went all the way with it. And it shows you that he's got a decent budget on that show if he can, you know. Right. It, and they, by the way, it was so popular, the book has gone into its second publishing. <laughs> really? Yeah. That was quick. I was just looking on Amazon right now, and it's hilarious because they, they have Oliver's book, and then right underneath it, number four, is Pence's book. Oh, Pence's book like, is shot to number four? Yeah, shot to number four now. Yeah. It's directly yeah, underneath. With an arrow. It goes one, two, three, and then... It, and it almost has the same cover, but he just did a little bit of a different cover. Oh, yeah. Well, he, he's got a vast Christian army behind him. You know, every single mega church is going to sign on to Amazon now and buy his damn Believe book. Believe me, they're not as big as the perverted HBO listeners. Who you know? For, <laughs> it, it's only eleven bucks. I mean, if you it, and the money's going to a good cause. So my suggestion to all of you is just go online and buy it, just to say fuck you to Pence, because <laughs> Pence right is. Hey, you could buy Ann Coulter books for one penny on Amazon now, one cent. Yeah, really? but the shipping is high. What, 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 what'd you say, Phil? The shipping is high. The ship, you know, the, the Coulter book might be a penny, but. It's ten dollars to ship it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's a very heavy book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of heavy lifting there. So, uh, have you got a uh, have you got a, a a a drain up your penis? Oh, uh, yes. Matter of fact. Yeah. Could you uh, send us a picture? I, yeah, maybe maybe tomorrow I'll uh, I'll get on. I'll be uh, feeling better, and I can get out of bed and sit in the chair, and I'll show you. Uh, the, uh, I don't want to uh, see it. <laughs> no, no. The, I do. You know, the, the, <laughs> yeah, it was Rob not, said sheepishly, was, I do. No, I said it. Oh, you well, said it. So your, it your was, ratings, the ratings on the show are going to go up. If you do that. Yeah, and also yeah, YouTube is going to take me no, off. What? It, it was nowhere near the, uh, the, the fear that I've had of this catheter for the last year and a half. Uh, I, it's like you don't know what's there. Uh, ex except for a little bit of tape, uh, tape to your leg, and then there's a bag that every once in a while you have to Wait walk minute. over to the toilet. Well, here's here's the guy who knows. That Wait a minute. Too. Here's the guy. He just came yeah. online who knows better than anybody how to calf. Uh, there you go. He, yeah. there is. F you missed, I think, Phil Patrick saying that. Uh, well, tell him what you said about it. you. You feared it for a year, and now that it's in there, you, you don't even feel it. Yeah. Well, of course it was. It was placed. At a time when I was knocked out, oh, and exactly. taking it out may, may be uh, as uncomfortable as removing the well, scapula. Well, uh, yeah, you don't know this, on. but in order to keep it staying in there until they need to release it, it's it has a balloon. it has barbs. 
or Mars. <laughs> no, the balloon. <laughs> the balloon. The balloon. Yeah. Is, and, and so when they, the when they pull, and they they yeah. inflate the balloon. Yeah. And it holds it. Uh, it wait a minute. Wait a minute. Ladder. Just just before they do that, do they play circus music? Uh, I don't know. And, and do they, you know, and, and, what would you like? Would you like a doggy or would you like a swan? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, really. yeah, but Patrick, uh, Pat, yeah. Patrick here wants to say something to you. Yeah. yeah. Well, two things. Remember, I put it in and out constantly whenever I take a leak. So it gets a different. I don't thing. know how you do that. I don't well, know how you do that. Because I can't. <laughs> So that's why it's grab and stab and just shove it and, you know, take care of it. But but another, and I know I told you this a couple weeks ago, but the one thing I want to make sure you do, Phil, is you're going to have it in for a while, right? Uh, Nine days. Okay. You're going to, they're going to give you a leg bag. Make sure you have it up high enough so that it does not, allow a lot of pulling because even though it's just a balloon it gets yeah so it'll pull because it it pulls and that's the other thing you need to be careful of and i do too like after i you know i'm gonna have kidney surgery in a in another month um wow. then you like rolling over and things like that you want to yeah. be conscious that that tube doesn't get caught on anything because even me, even though I can't feel anything, my yeah. spasm like a motherfucker because the body knows pain. So just yeah. make it up high enough and be aware of it. Because uh, well, I elected to get the bag that doesn't go on your leg, the one that hangs. Okay. I figured I was uh, the maximum time I would be in public with it was be two days. So, uh, and I needed the extra volume because I'm full of, not only, I'm full of shit, but I'm also full of piss. Well, <laughs> and vinegar. And even, yeah, really. So you're going to want it because, believe me, a thousand cc's of piss weighs a yeah. lot. And you can pull your dick right off. It, you will. Yeah. just rip it off your body. So if you, you can see those Japanese guys. That, that that put weights on their dick yes. to make it longer. You could do that and, now. No, they don't yeah. do it to see what, to make it longer. They do it because it's a contest. Here, here's what Who I can don't, lift the most weight. Here's what I don't get. Oh. You know, it's bad enough they pull out your goddamn prostate, okay? But now they're making you go around with a tube up your dick for nine days in a bag. I some mean, some people do well, that for pleasure. <laughs> well, yeah, some people really pay fifty dollars a piece to do it uptown, you know, but you know. Well, the choice is infection, I guess. But uh, and, and I understand that removing the catheter too early can cause other problems. So I'm I'm at peace with it. Peace. And, uh, yeah. And, you know, uh, thanks to Ray, thanks to Ray, my neck is, is fine. I, you know, I was in that bed for two days. Uh, and uh, the adjustments that I got on that upper cervical by that guy was wonderful it's amazing uh, because, uh, so when do you leave the yeah, ho- when amazing. do you leave the hospital i left uh, this morning oh. about 11. oh you left already you're home yeah yeah i had the procedure on monday uh and they throw you out on tuesday uh, although it was very comfortable i would have stayed a couple of extra days uh you know i was i was you know I so was so what are you, are you are you lying in bed right now or yeah and, and and where is where is the pee bag? Uh, it's hanging on the nightstand drawer. So as long as it's below my bladder, and uh, my bed's a little on the high side, so I actually needed a step ladder to aid me to get up one step. Oh, the reason it has to be lower than your bladder, of course, is because then otherwise it wouldn't. It'd be hard. It, it would wouldn't back. drain. It wouldn't right. drain. Gravity doesn't. Gravity You'd be doesn't seeing up a pole. Well, isn't that kind of the good side of this? Isn't it fun that if you really have to pee, uh, you can just do it. You don't have to pee. You just do it. Yeah. Oh, it's look like that. being in a swimming pool. Yeah, but now here's it's like a... being in a swimming pool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, now you that... pee in swimming pools. Now, oh. now that you don't have I pee in the ocean. Now that okay, you that's, don't that's have. Fine. Oh, that's now wait different. a minute. Hold on yeah. a second. Now that Everyone you now that you don't ocean. have the prostate, the good side of this is probably that you're not going to have to pee every five minutes, right? Well, yeah, we'll see. I, I mean, that's 
uh, that's supposed to be a side effect of uh, getting rid of the prostate. And, well, it's not uh, a side you know, effect. It's it's it, it cures the problem of uh, the prostate crushing in on your. Uh, but I would bet in the beginning that's not the case because you've got a bunch of swollen tissue. Yeah, it takes right. a while for that to take to, a while. Yeah, that's why you still got the catheter yeah. in. But what what do they yeah, what, and, uh, what do they feel I about? I wrote him. Yeah, I, I wrote I wrote the doctor to ask him if I still had my nerves intact. Uh, you know, from a, from a uh, erectile uh, point of view, and he hasn't gotten back to me yet because I know that he, uh, since the anesthesiologist told me I was flailing ninety pound nurses uh, around the operatory, I I figured maybe he <laughs> clipped them just to, just to pay me back. Yeah. <laughs> You've been a bad boy. You'll never is, get another yeah. erection again. Now, what have they? What have they? Yeah. To, what have they told you? Uh, uh, they, have they told you there's the, always the possibility that you could you there you will get erections and you will be able to have normal sex. Uh, yeah, they, 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 I think that's the carrot that they give you. <laughs> but uh, you know, we'll I'll see. You know, uh, the the jury is out. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like I said, I had 64 years. It was a good run. In, <laughs> incontinence, uh, incontinence, is that a problem, going to be a problem, they, do they feel? Uh, in the beginning, there could be some leakage. Okay. Uh, and uh, that I have to practice uh, what women do. Uh, Kegel. Uh, what, what's the uh, Kegel exercises? Kegel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kegel. Yeah, and uh, if I practice that, yeah, uh, it will uh, it'll help with uh, uh, leak, and you know I'm I'm not too worried about it. Boy, are uh, we losing audience well, fast on this discussion? I'm doing kegels <laughs> right now. I actually do kegels like <laughs> yeah. the whole show. I <laughs> yeah, you can't tell, uh, but yeah, <laughs> no, we still got 32 people watching. <laughs> well, now it's down. Now, now it's down to 29. Now it's 31. Well, 31. you know, usually. I would think that as soon as you start talking catheter, people start running to the hills. Yeah, exactly. you know? yeah. it, it's not. Hey, Phil, don't get that. Don't get that colostomy bag mixed up with your CPAP mask. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, thank you. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Wow. Hey, yeah, where's Renee? Little... This this is like the all guys channel tonight. I know. Renee, come on. How can she possibly join in on this conversation? <laughs> she fits in very well. I mean, she, I, there's yeah. some part of her that enjoys this. Next week, yeah, we'll, exactly. uh, uh, let's see here. What, what, what would be the woman's equivalent of this? Uh, when they have to. Hysterectomy. What? Hysterectomy. Hysterectomy. Yeah, yeah hysterectomy. Uh, that could be a, somewhat of an equivalent. Sure. Mammogram. Yeah. Because I think a guy, when. When you know his pro prostate is removed, even though uh, he's had many years of using it and having a good time using it and so on, uh, you still feel you're worried about your manhood and about your ability to still perform, as it were. Well, uh, though, well, it, I, I I did I did go to Red Tube one time before uh, I went into the hospital. <laughs> What's red to? Well, how is how's Faye taking this? How's Faye taking this? Because it, it affects her. Uh, she uh, so far she's just been a real professional. You know, Wait a minute, a real professional? Who'd you, who'd, who, who'd yeah. you, who are you going out you with, know, a hooker? Care, caregiving is, care a hooker. is something that runs in the Filipino community. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know? Yeah. So, uh, She's just been the, uh, uh, really great. Oh, Did she and, say uh, thank you? What? Did she say, me? say thank you? <laughs> oh, uh, why? Because I'll keep the sheets clean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, um, I always used to like to tell women, I like to th thank women for their cervix. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> wow. Uh, well. Happy ending? What? <laughs> Well, yeah. just a little pun on my part, folks. Uh, yeah, I can say it because I'm a veteran. You well, know. we didn't lose anyone on that joke. No, we didn't lose anyone. We got oh, one person amazing. on that joke. <laughs> you know, I, I heard you uh, the other night saying something about uh, uh, Marjorie wants to cremate you. Yeah. Do you realize that you get a 
free veterans burial uh, in a graveyard without cremation uh, for your service. Do I really? Right. You know, I, I, she went to look for my various benefits that I am supposedly accorded. I can still Probably get a loan for a, on a house. Out. What? You'll be out in Calverton, Long Island. Oh, really? Yes, and Marjorie, too. She's your wife. No, she can She's be there, too. Yeah. yeah. So, so be... Price is outside. right. No, she wants oh, to be cremated. She, you she get the flag, you get the whole thing. But she wants to be cremated. Yeah. What can I say? I can't argue with that, you know. Well, yeah. let her let her do what she wants. But if you don't want to be and you don't want to pay for it, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. you got it. That's correct. Yeah, but I don't know. I, I, I don't even want to think about it yet. I'm not planning on going anywhere yet. This although, is a great right, discussion, well, although, guys. Although this is time, oh, yeah. to, you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's great. For, it's great for this to happen to you when I'm when I'm about ready to go in for my yearly physical and get another PSA test, <laughs> you know, and worry about you because know, it went up and then it went down, you know. So I yeah. don't know. I don't it, know. It, it could have been a slight infection, you know, See, going no, up. No, no, it only went down three tenths of a point, went up about a point, uh, but it went down three tenths <laughs> no, when I got right. another one. But I always worry about it, you know. Uh, and, and chances are it doesn't mean anything because I'm still down around a two five. So I'm, you know. Yeah. You were up around a well sixteen or something. Uh, well, I went up to a sixteen because of the infection. Yeah. And then, and then and, when I took Cipro, it went back down to about a nine. Yeah, but that's still questionable. It's still pretty high. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah I had a, I had a, I had a really bad prostate infection once. I was in the hospital, and they gave me that Cipro for a week. Yeah. Thank God. Yeah. I, I think I would have died. Yeah. Or they would sure. have had to take it out or something. You sure you weren't yeah. acting? I, no, it was for, it was real. I actually had it. It was the worst, the most sick I've ever been in my life. Well, I just hate going to my urologist. Not not because of what he does. He sticks this uh, he sticks this uh, sonogram up my ass, mm. and I guess it's the best way to have a look around there to make sure see if you can't find any cancer. Uh, but he also I, on the bill charges four hundred bucks for it. And anytime well, I go what he over does there, is how many how many fingers does he use? None. One or two. None. He doesn't use fingers. <laughs> I, I, oh, along with the scope. Th no, this is this is just a sonogram. He goes in there, looks around, says, "Oh, you have some calcium deposits there, and blah blah blah." But nothing looks suspicious. Come back and see me in six <laughs> months. What? If nothing yeah. looks suspicious, why? Well, because I want to stick this up your ass again and make another four hundred dollars. <laughs> Yeah, you know the time yeah. before he didn't stick the thing up my ass. He wanded my kidney and my whole uh, 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 tract from the kidneys down with a uh, sonogram, and then looked at the bladder, and they charged me four hundred bucks for that. And, is, Jeez, and, and, and how long did either both of these procedures take? If they took two minutes, I'm extending it. Okay. Well. When they were wheeling me past all the machinery that they had, mm -hmm. uh, I can see why stuff costs what it costs. Uh, I don't know what this Da Vinci thing costs, but it's got to be expensive. It's uh, what they remove the prostate with. Yeah. And uh, the, the robotic thing. Uh, but uh, And then the doctor, uh, Indian doctor, Dr. Yeah. Seppi, very nice guy, mm -hmm. wears a turban, and uh, uh, really good demeanor yeah. uh, at Ten minutes to six in the morning on Monday, he was there. He came into my room at eight o'clock at night. He was there. He yeah. hadn't left. Well, you don't know he that he. Had, you don't know that he hadn't left. No, know. I asked him. I, I, I asked him. I said, "You you're putting in a really long day." He says, "Yeah." He says, "I I had two or three uh, prospects." How long did yours take? So, How, you know, it probably didn't take more than three that. hours. It took three hours. Uh, well, he was throwing everyone uh, around the room. But, I mean, yeah, well, if if I wasn't throwing them, it was supposed to take 300 minutes. So what's that, three hours and 20 minutes? 300? Oh. Why do they figure 300 minutes? How do they uh, come out with that? It's like five hours, six, yeah. 60 times. Well, huh? they, they, uh, no, uh, wait a minute, 300, three times six, no, 200 minutes. Okay. Two. Uh, 200 minutes. So that's it was uh, three, three, three hours, hours and 20, 20 minutes. Yeah. Uh, now, and they figure it that way because I guess they can charge by the minute instead of the hour. They make more money. Ah. <laughs> well, I wouldn't think that operation would take that long, you know, but, you know, you never know. I, uh, who was yeah. it? Who was it that I was talking to? The, the, oh, my wife with, with the pancreatic cancer, my ex-wife, Ronnie. 
Uh, yeah. She was, uh, I think I heard her say 14 hours. It may have been wow. more. Um, yeah, I thought operation. you said 17. But it, it might know, have been 17, something either. like that. I'm just, I'm just wondering. I mean, I'm sure the doctor isn't there for every minute of that. I mean, he would be so exhausted. He probably has. Am I right, Jeff? A doctor he passes it off to that does certain parts of the procedure. Well, yes, but I have seen one guy work 10 hours without moving. Well, that even in a leak. Unbelievable. Oh, crazy. Did he have a catheter? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And and I, I saw a guy go to take a piss, and he didn't even really leave the room. He had a nurse had a bottle and right in there. <laughs> he had yeah. a bucket or something. Yeah. yeah. Bucket. Did he walk out? You know, for a place that's supposed to be sterile, to, work to pee hours, in a hours. bucket. In, in the, you know. Well, pee is sterile. Yeah, I pee is sterile. Yeah. Actually, that's why I drink a glass every morning oh, with a raw they, egg. They put new plugs on and all that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Are you a doctor, Jeff? No, Jeff, Jeff. No, I'm a I'm a guy who developed medical devices. Oh, okay. I'm, oh, so is my brother. So I'm an engineer. Oh, okay. And so uh, the process, the the uh, tools that uh, Phil is using, I'm very familiar with them because uh, a lot of the people who uh, I work with uh, work at Da Vinci right now. Now, I tell you, he, he's a he, you know, in some ways, Jeff, you're kind of a hero. Think how many lives do you figure through your work you've saved? Oh my God! As far as hernia, I probably did more hernias than anybody else in the world from from the devices that I developed. Really? Wow. That's so uh, great. Because, yeah. because, Alex, maybe you'll get a discount on your next hernia. Yeah, I, well, I have a hernia, so I have to do something about it eventually, but it's not. Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, matter of fact, Da Vinci uses a hernia device now themselves, really? so they can do it too. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was Ray. Yeah, I just wanted to say to Jeff, I think it's great. You know, my my brother does the same thing that that you did, or you still do. Great. He's a he's a mechanical engineer, and he invented <laughs> he invented a thing for the the vein in your uh, that goes like behind your heart there. Um, I don't know, but it's that? yeah. And my my dad. Uh, and and to, it's like a thing to keep it open so you don't like die. And my dad has it in him. My father has no, it. Cool. the thing my brother invented is in my dad, and it saved it's his life. Oh. Isn't that? Wow. Awesome. I know it's amazing. <laughs> I, but it was just that coincidence. It was just coincidence. Wow. Cool. Yeah. Incredible. Do you, yeah. do you know who I knew once? Uh, I used to know a guy whose father everybody knows. Uh, yeah. And his name is Doctor Heimlich. Mm -hmm. I've heard. And when I met him, you remember you remember, you met him too, didn't you, John? Didn't you meet him? I think so. He came around Midnight Blue a couple of times, and he, really, I don't remember that particularly because yeah. it was before anybody had heard of the maneuver. No, they no the maneuver had happened already, and I, oh, and, I and I met okay. I met his son, and I said, "Your father oh. saved millions of people." I mean, just by simply, I mean, it wasn't something, it wasn't like he invented a machine. He just invented a process of getting stuff out of people's uh, uh, windpipe. I've used it twice, and it worked both times for two friends of mine. Really? Wow. Yeah, I was, I, I was surprised, too. It was like, holy crap, this actually works. No, he, this guy, and I said, your, your father's a hero. And he says, yeah, I know. <laughs> you know, it's a hard thing yep. to live up to. You know, so. Right. Uh, anyway, hey, listen, a uh, couple of items in the news. You don't mind if we talk in the news, Phil, do you? Oh, I, it's your show. <laughs> Not when you're <laughs> on it. Well. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> no, uh, uh, the, um, the thing that got me this weekend was the most recent speech by Dear Donald uh, about um, he wants to use capital punishment on certain oh, yeah. drug dealers. I like it. it what? <laughs> I like it. Duarte wants the same thing. I, I think it. I think that'll help stop drugs. Oh, yeah. No. Sure. Hey, these people are killing people out there with their illegal opiates. You know, well then, wait a minute. Then, then by died. that definition, shouldn't we shouldn't we execute all the drug company leaders? 
because well, they're the ones. A, they're the ones who are. Difference. They're the I, ones who I, are. are I, produ- I, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. They're the I, ones that are I producing. Agree. They're the ones who are producing the opiates. You agree? We well, should. I, uh, no, I'm talking about the poppy field guys. Oh, well, wait America. a minute. That's heroin. That's not. Uh, they that's, don't show up here. That's <laughs> not opiate. That's not the same opiate. Wait a minute. The poppy field guys are in Afghanistan, <sighs> Phil. Not. Yeah, talking about the opiate yeah. well, I'm, yeah. I'm not I'm not a big purchaser of these poppy <clears throat> field products. So, uh, you know, I'm not exactly But that's sure. not what that's not what from. he's what he's yelling about. He he would he wants to go after people who are like selling uh, underground oxycodone and oxycontin and things mm-hmm. like that. Well, he even Good. mentioned doctors under his breath today. Oh, really? Good. Crooked doctors. He said crooked doctors. Oh my God! Put them to. Have death. you seen his doctor? He looks as crooked yeah. as any doctor <laughs> I've ever seen. Doctor Vinnie Bamboo yes. adjusted his weight. <laughs> well, maybe they'll get mine before I have to pay the bill. Yeah, yeah, but like for instance, you know, there are people in this world who need pain medication. My wife being one of them. She and she's watched I'm very, one. and you're one too, Kevin. And and yep. you're watched very carefully by your pain manager, right? I mean, they yep. they make and sure. It's a pain. But they make sure you don't do more than a certain amount, you know. Yep. It's all right, you know. Uh, and But I would hate to see the day come when a guy like Donald Trump forces people to stop producing these drugs, and my wife has to be He's in pain. Not, that, you know, where are you getting that? He's not stopping anyone. Well, I mean, my question drugs. is, He's when you're, when, uh, uh, it turns out, it turns out that hey, a lot of these drug companies are drug I dumping. I object to that one because uh, a friend of mine uh, has gone to the VA up in Reading, and he was just shut down. He, yep. he went to the uh, VA up in Reading, and he went there, and he's been going there for his pain meds. He was hit by a truck, and he went in there to get his pain meds, and they said, no, we're not doing that anymore. That's right. Maybe he's now addicted. He has nothing. Maybe he doesn't need the pain meds. What he needs is the. No, no, no. did he you was hit by a fucking truck? Did you he's hear what Kevin said? They, they they said we're not People doing heal. that anymore. They weren't saying just to you. They were saying they weren't doing that anymore. Period. Uh, just uh, not just to the guy, but to anyone. So the VA needs more funding, obviously. Oh, oh, whatever. All, all I know is that I've had three doctors you, you stop know, doing this guy, it. You I've can, had to go you, around. You, you, now you, I feel like I'm looking for a drug dealer. Yeah, you're, 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 you know, yeah. you, you, you got a, a tube stuck up your dick, and you still got a stick up your ass. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had a trumpet up my nose. <laughs> and what were you? There playing? are so many people that. Who 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 were prescribed opiates or benzodiazepine medication? The insurance company cuts them off. They can't get it anymore. They're addicted. They were doing what the doctor told them to do. They absolutely need it. They got to go out on the street buy heroin. They don't know what they're getting. There are like fifty-year-old yuppies in Silicon Valley dying because of that. Now, whose fault I ain't is doing that? that. I but I mean, there are. I, that. Know. I know, but my there are people falling off my foot right now. But there are people end up having to do it because yeah. because they have the physiology where they get so easily addicted to it that they, if they don't get it, they feel like they're going to go insane. Um, so it, Alex, is the solution to kill to kill the people who are? I mean, is that the Alex, solution? Yeah. <laughs> Alex, did they what? cut Marjorie off from no, her drugs? No, they ha- no they haven't. But uh, I know that one of our doctors uh, has stopped us from getting certain things because he's afraid of prescribing it right uh well, and, and, but know, so but I she mean, but she has a pain doctor somebody who specializes in pain uh much yeah. like i do by doing this program uh but he specializes <laughs> in, yeah. in alleviating pain, pain and right. so that's his specialty and and well, maybe uh, kevin's friend needs a pain doctor. I, I'll give you a good example. Uh, you know, I'll give you a good example. He, that's where he was going. I'll give you a good example. You know, we were, we're on this new new uh, pill plan where we have to buy 90 days at a time, uh, and we get it really cheaper, and we really save two-thirds off of our pharmacy bills. Mm-hmm. But when she wanted to get um, uh, the uh, sleeping pill, uh, what's it called? Uh, little Ambien? Blue. Ambien? No, no, the other one. Um, oh. uh, Lunesta? Lunesta, mm-hmm. uh, which I also have some of. 
Uh, we used to get like, he would give us uh, 30 at a time or something like that. Uh, now, he, he had to say, okay, 90 of them to the pharmacy. And then the pharmacy said, we can only give you 15 at a time every 23 days. Correct. So, the, huh. they, 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 so that's one of the newer laws, okay? Mm -hmm. And Lunesta is, I don't know if it's that dangerous a drug. I don't know. I don't find I've gotten hooked on it. In fact, I used uh, uh, Xanax to put me to sleep, a little little shard of Xanax to put me to sleep sometimes. Um, and the doctor's not afraid of Xanax, of, of giving a Xanax. It's it's weird. It's just very weird all the way around, and I don't know what to say particularly. You know. Hey Alex, be, just be careful with the Xanax because I take uh, clonazepam because I had trouble sleeping like 15 years ago. Yeah. And, and my doctor had me taking it every night, no matter what, and I'm completely addicted to it now. And I'm gonna have to go through detox to oh, get I, off of it. I go right, <laughs> within a few months. Is that also. Oh, is that uh, also called clonopin? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't uh, I, uh, You know uh, that's good stuff. Xanax, I have never uh, Yeah, but you got to be careful. I like I'm I am absolutely addicted yeah, to I've it. I didn't have it for 3 days and I almost had seizures. Well, I, no, I I, really I, I to begin with I take only like a quarter of the pill. And oh, I've not good. I've that's not good. changed that in years, okay? And I don't take it every uh, night. I only take it when I feel I can't sleep. So That's how you're supposed to use yeah, it. That's so, exactly how you're yeah. supposed to yes, use Patrick. it. Yes, yeah. Patrick. Uh, that's funny with the uh, clonopin. I take it as well, but it's for leg spasms. Yeah, it right. It amazes me that one pill can be used for different things, and it zeroes in on it. And I am, I have zero. I, I'm not addicted to it. Um, I've had to go off of it a couple of times uh, for different reasons. And how nothing. much do you take? Uh, what is it? Um, 0.5 10, milligram? 10 milligrams, I think, something like no, that. No, 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 one milligram, maybe. Not 10. 10 would be ridiculous, like way too much. It's all right. I was just was wondering. But some people don't get addicted. It's great. But like me, hey, I'm addicted. It too I took it for a, yeah, one milligram, it for a yeah. long plane flight. I took it for a long plane flight. A friend of mine gave me two of them. I went from San Francisco to Incheon, Korea. And I woke up 45 minutes before the plane landed. And then I went from Incheon to Sydney, Australia, and I woke up two hours before the plane landed. It was, it was great. I put a little note, don't wake me. Leave yeah. me alone. Don't feed me. Just leave me alone. And, I did the same uh, of the Philippines yeah. last, last winter. And what did you take? And, wow. And, and just, there's no, there's minute, no side minute. effects. Rob, what, what, did, what did you take, Rob? Same thing, the clonopin. Clonopin. Oh, okay, so that's what I've been taking for 15 years, and it actually does nothing for me anymore. But if I don't have it, I, 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 I literally go insane. Like over yeah. three days, I have to. One time I was somewhere where I forgot it, and I, I, I almost completely lost my mind. And you get those like, like electric shocks in your. In uh huh. My, yeah. my legs hurt. My, I, I was that, getting but... shocks in my legs, my body. I couldn't sleep. I felt like I was going to climb the walls. I could. I was. My mood was like all over the place. It was crazy. Wow. I couldn't um, wait to yeah, get I home. Don't, I, I don't get anything like that with the Xanax. The only thing I've gotten recently uh, that got kind of bad, and then I found a way to solve it was I have. I get cramps in my legs, and I just found if I take magnesium, I don't get cramps in my legs. So. Okay. You yeah. bananas too. To to well, bananas. bananas but great. I also take potassium too. Potassium. Yeah, but magnesium is yeah. really good for that, especially yeah. the the yeah. newer ones that go that penetrate your uh, brain uh, better. The newer magnesiums. But, yeah. yeah, there's one you can take called Calm. You buy it over the counter. Yes, yeah. And you mix and you mix it with water and drink it before you go to sleep, and it's great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No cramps uh, at all. And, Does you, you had leg cramps too? Did you feel? No, no, it was just to relax you so you'd fall yeah, asleep. Yeah. Uh, the one of, now another thing I wanted to bring up here, uh, and this is the sex part of the program, so put the kitties in bed, okay? Uh, <laughs> okay. And we're talking about our president's sex life. Uh, the latest. Oh, gross. Man, does he, does he hit some hot ones? See that Playboy bunny? Yeah. She, she was oh. a playmate. And uh, Whatever. <laughs> I, 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 the difference between what you find hot and what I find hot are two entirely different things. 
Uh, but, oh, she's but, pretty. Oh, I she think. But she's this one, this good. one has an interesting story to tell. Oh, she is pretty. She signed a non-disclosure yeah. agreement because she was approached by the National Enquirer, the publishing right. company from the National Enquirer, to t to tell her story to the National Enquirer and then sign a non-disclosure agreement so she wouldn't tell the story to anybody else. And she the thought guy they, that owns the National Enquirer she, is a friend of Trump. Yes, yeah, she thought they were going to sell the article. What they were doing was okay. buying the article from her, having her sign this to put her, you know, silence. to silence her. And so she yeah, is now suing, say that this was all a canard to shut her up and that she's going to tell her story. And they're allowing... Well, that happens a lot. And they're allowing the suit. He's going to have to answer to that. Yeah, she's suing the Enquirer. Yep. Yep. In fact, didn't they come up with something today? A judge said that she had the ability to sue, uh, yep. even though he was president of the United States at the present That's time. Right. So That's this right. president well, is... Well, who is she suing? She's suing the president. The president she's suing uh, the National Enquirer and I think the president as well. So it's, uh, it's uh, you know, there's a lot of this stuff running around. Supposedly there are nine women uh, who, who have come forward. There's the woman who's also uh, claiming that he, uh, the one from The Apprentice. Yeah, I was just going to yes. say. Yes. Amorosa? No, not no, Amorosa. Different one totally. Brand oh. new. Oh, was it Aubrey or something? Was it? Oh. I think it sounds right. Yeah. Who, who oh, don't, that's right. Who do I don't have a picture of? Uh, John Perulis. I can look what on it? MSNBC. It's probably on now. Wait right. a minute. John Perulis. What happened? To, oh, oh no. I'm, I'm okay. I uh, I have a big video shoot tomorrow, and I'm just charging batteries oh, down okay. here. Oh, okay. I just it's Because okay. you use a black background, I didn't know whether we lost you or something. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm still uh, We've been joined by Jack Bishop, whose show follows us at, uh, oh. at midnight Eastern Daylight Time. Yes, Jack. Just wanted to see if Phil was okay and uh, say that oh, yeah, you. be sure and routinely change that stick up your ass. Uh, on the ninth, I, I get I get to I get to move it from one side to the other, just like dental floss. Oh really? Oh okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Jack's picture yeah, is just yeah. swirling around. We're getting the little swirl. That's what that is let if me, you're watching us, let folks. Me see, let me do something about that. See if that makes there it. There we go. Sense. That oh. does it. Yeah. Uh, oh. I, I heard you guys talking about uh, all these pain medications and things that you're on, and so am I. And I want to know how come we ha those of us who are products of the 60s haven't been pressing to have greater study done on the effects of marijuana for pain relief. Well, they well, I think we are. A lot of it's starting now. You're getting a lot more medical marijuana. Well, it, stuff it, yeah. the reason now, we right? haven't done a go, lot of go, stuff. Go, go to projectcbd.org. Yeah. There's tons of medical yeah, research. One of the reasons projectcbd.org. The, the but, but, but regular doctors are still having trouble doing the research or even at university level because it's federally, it's still illegal. So they have a hard time getting product. Yeah. To do to yeah. do the studies they need to do. That's the uh, big problem. Uh, there, there's also a drug that uh, should be restudied and revisited, and that's LSD. Quaaludes. Hell yes. Uh, Quaaludes. Yeah. Well, no, Quaaludes. Uh, no, they didn't have any help. All they did was put yeah. you to sleep. Yeah. Or yeah. LSD. Oh no, they did. They were the they were the international leg spreader. Ask uh, who's that comedian? Bing Crosby, not Bing Crosby. Uh, what, Bill, what Bill Cosby. Bill, Bill, Bill Cosby. Cosby. You're bit, wait a minute. You're mixing up Bill Cosby with <laughs> Bing Crosby. Bing Crosby. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm on. I'm on the. I'm on the phone. I can't see. He's still under a little. No, he still. Yeah, he, no. We can all hey, still have a drink. Fact, tropic drugs. We can. Hey, say, Alex, yeah, do you remember? Do you remember in the I, late? Oh, sorry. I did. Yeah. Well, anyway, I'm what? Get up and get Vicodin. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, do, do, do you yeah. remember in the late '60s, early '70s, when they were actually using LSD to help cancer patients? Do you remember that? Well, they, and they were, it, oh, it, it was it, allowing them it, to have. It was a very. It was a very therapeutic drug, but yeah. but uh, the government decided to close it down because too many people were having fun using it. Uh, and what they did in the process was prevent anybody from being able to continue the studies on it. And, and where it was very valuable uh, is that with LSD, and, and by the way, 
uh, they have found that what was what was I seeing on? I think it was Sunday on the Sunday show. They had a show about the mind, and it came up this whole thing about uh, uh, LSD being used for people with Alzheimer's and so on. Uh, but they can't study it because it, it's so restricted that they can't go ahead and do a study on the damn thing. So, uh, you know, that, that's the problem with all of these things when they shut them down. They, oh, well, kid, kids are having fun with it. We better shut it down. You and, know, the best uh, research on uh, CBD and THC and marijuana is being conducted in Israel right now. The Israelis are so far ahead. They, they've, uh, they're, they're the leaders in this. So, you know, that's good that other countries are uh, taking this up. Yeah, uh, Jack, you seem to be having trouble with your signal and your pictures popping in and out. Yeah, I'm having trouble with my camera. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but no, don't, I, or you know what I look like. Just, just <laughs> let let your picture freeze or or d turn the camera let, off because that let, that's driving me crazy. Yeah. yeah. All right, hey, John. What was the site that you said uh, where that they have the studies uh, posted uh, pr on? Uh, Project CBD okay. dot org. Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to know yeah. what they were saying about LSD, though. They that they found that that uh, with Alzheimer's patients that it was helpful. Uh, that that uh, oh, oh, I'll tell you what was what they found was very interesting. They found I, I think psilocybin uh, in small doses also helps with depression. Yeah. People suffering from depression. Well, no, but what they yeah. were what they, I think one of the things they were bringing up was the fact that there was this woman who had uh, a uh, um, was it? It was either a, you know she went through early. She was going through early Alzheimer's, mm. and uh, as the Alzheimer's was coming on, she suddenly started painting, and she mm. became a rather prolific and great painter. Mm. And they honestly believe that what happens is that Alzheimer's <laughs> may rob you of a certain part of your brain, but it activates another. It's very strange, very strange. Mm. But that, mm. that was just one of the things that I that I yeah. saw. I have to go back but, and watch that show. I'm, I can't remember most of it. But uh, unless Big Pharma has an interest in this stuff, yeah, getting research done, uh, as someone said, you know, is difficult in, at best and impossible in many cases. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, the, the thing that convinced me that it was all a bunch of bullshit. And Alex, you probably <laughs> remember this when the American tobacco industry. Uh, patented all the good names of marijuana, like Acapulco Gold, and I few believe I believe you are giving in to a a, a, a folk, urban folk, myth. Urban myth, yeah, yeah. Uh, I checked into that and I couldn't find any validity to the fact that they had uh, copyrighted any of those names. And, well, and, 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 part of, and, and part of the reason I think they couldn't anyway is because they were being used generically in pop culture. And so, therefore, you can't like, uh, oh, yes, you, you know, I guess you could name a cigarette Cools, but you had to spell it with a K. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, so uh, uh, I I do remember, do you remember, this is interesting. There was, uh, and I felt this was the, the, um, um, uh, tobacco companies trying to get ahead of the curve. There was this uh, tobacco. You would buy the tobacco loose, and then it came with papers, and you would put it in this little machine, and then you would put in the tobacco, and it would oh, roll. Yeah. It would roll. I this, remember those. Machines. You remember that? Yeah. Zigzag. What, what was the that name no, of it? Wait a minute. That, somebody it was here. Beyond zigzag. No, somebody here had the name for it. Laredo. 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 Right. Yeah. And I said, this is the drug companies testing a machine that people would use to roll joints because I think they figured and they as well they should that nobody wants pre-machine rolled pot you know we want stuff that's got a dovetail joint on it you know I mean it's done with yeah. and uh, this was their way for people who couldn't roll of getting a way to roll it and of course we use those machines to roll pot sure yeah but waste yeah. a lot of dope you made a really big joint. Much yeah, bigger. you sure did. In I those days, in those dope. days, though, Rob, you had to make them that big for them to, for you to get high on them. It used to be all that Jamaican well, weed that you bought by the pound because that was the only way you could buy it and get any high at all. 
Yeah. Now these these far, uh, these 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 uh, agriculturalists in Northern California have made pot so strong that, quite frankly, two puffs and you're you're out to the out to out to the barn oh, yeah. counting cows. Yeah. That's for sure. yeah, I don't know how I came up with that saying, but you can use it if you want to. Counting cows. Counting cows. That's what I do to go to sleep. <laughs> Yeah. Don't yes, you have a yeah, friend yes. in Marin that owns a milk farm? Yeah, John. Yes, I do. Cows. Yes, John. <laughs> well, no, I was going to say with the, the thing about the how strong pot is, uh, a friend of mine, a uh, young guy, was in about a year or so ago, was in one of the Columbia oh. University studies where part of why, because he was, he, he was just out of college and not in law school yet, so he had nothing to do, and they could get, make some money by being one of these drug tests. He went there... And he he smokes he smokes pretty pretty regular pot smoker currently, yeah. but they put him into a test where he was in a room and they basically like gave him a joint, and he smoked it. And then after so many minutes or whatever, they come back. Does he want any more? It was whatever it was. The thing is, what he found out was that the 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 the, the pot that they were giving him was the pot that is grown specifically for the government, like down in South Carolina, and it hasn't changed in its in its potency in like 30 years that's right because they want to keep the they want to keep the standard you know if you they, they're yeah. not talking they they're not changing with the times they're saying well you know the previous ones they don't want to go up and down he said i i barely got high on, the, on on these things at all i go home and have a joint the same size i'd be total i'd be just totally wasted <laughs> he yeah. said you know the what what's considered america you know the the government the government uh, okay pot I, I just is think, so weak compared I, to what they're doing now. I just think that there should be some kind of reward for all those gentlemen growers up at Mendocino who for years <laughs> have been mixing the breeds of pot and stuff like that and coming out with these really great strains of pot. And I think they're getting kind of wiped out in all of this now, you know. Well, I don't know. Can they sell them to the California? I, I don't know what what's happened with them. I mean, and... Anybody know from, uh, who's out in California? What's happened to well, those people? Yeah, don't uh, they apply yeah. for permit? There, there's there's a lot of controversy right now uh, on the Eel River. Uh, uh, they want to. Uh, there was a railroad company that used to go through there, but uh, it's been defunct because of all the collapses al along the Eel River Canyon. Which is also home to uh, hundreds of uh, dope farms. Uh, when, when I was webmastering for Friends of the Eel River, they flew me over that, and uh, I saw all these greenhouses, hundreds of them. And I asked the pilot, I said, "Hey, what's that?" And he said, "Oh, those are all the dope farms." And so those uh, folks are worried about uh, regulation. They're worried about uh, rogue farmers who are. Yeah. You know, polluting the uh, river and the environment over there. So that you know, there's a lot of yeah. stuff happening. Was up there, there right was now. there a and I, I may be wrong about this, but it, it, did I did I hear correctly? I think that uh, Mike Tyson is growing marijuana, has a marijuana farm uh, down <laughs> in doubt down it. in Southern California. Yeah, that he's gone into the business. A lot of these people have gone into the business of growing now that they can grow in the open. Anyway. Well, the, Hey, listen, this, is, uh, this has been a nice little night tonight. Uh, we haven't had to look at Phil, uh, which has been... <laughs> and we're so happy, Phil, that you're, you're okay. And, you know, you're, yeah, yeah, God bless you, Phil. You're in good spirits. Take care of yourself. And, and get back here in good health so we can hate you again. Yeah, you know? we need you All back. Right. You know, uh, yeah, enough of the, enough of this. Get well soon. You know, I mean, I need something to externalize my rage upon. Yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you very much, Rob. We really appreciate the call tonight from you. Of course, as always, uh, uh, Bob Ebert. A uh, big thank you to you for having joined us this evening. John Perula is always a pleasure. Kevin. Uh, we always like Santa Claus on the show. Patrick, old time, <laughs> been with me forever, and you can stay with me forever. In fact, I'm not letting you leave me forever. Uh, Ray <laughs> Renati, thank you. Jeff Stein, thank you. Thanks to, uh, oh, who's that? Oh, yeah, that's Phil. That's his phone number. I don't want to show it to you. That's a phone uh, guy. And, and, and John Rockwell, uh, thank you as well for having Glad joined us tonight. <laughs> I, I consider it a, a great pleasure. And uh, everybody, if you would, would you please give a big wave goodbye to the folks out there so they know you love them. Thank you. Hope we'll see you all here again tomorrow night. Bye-bye.
And that is our uh, citizen panel for tonight. It's been fun. That was a fun evening. You know, these things can just be plain old fun. The next show coming up, Intersection. That's with Jack and Amy. Right. Jack and Amy next. And then at uh, 1 o'clock in the morning, Eastern Daylight Time, uh, is uh, the uh, is Connections. Uh, a fun show that comes out of Florida and is broadcast over GabNet. We're happy to have them here. We'll see you again tomorrow night. Uh, yeah, you know. Same time. Oh, Damien's on at 9.30 tomorrow night. Well, actually, tomorrow night at 8.30, the sports show is on uh, the arena with Franchise MC, that followed by Damien Chaplin, followed by me. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye. Bye.